Here are the top five considerations for bipolar ionization. Number one, the placement of it. Is it in room in a portable unit like this, or is it in your existing ductwork system? Ions only have a 60 second lifespan. So when it comes to a long duct run or larger facilities, or even medium sized facilities, oftentimes you don't get enough ions out of the ductwork into the space. With an in-room unit, the ions don't have to travel very far, so you're able to get the max amount of ions in that space as soon as you can. Two, ozone free. Ozone is not good in high levels. It exists in nature, but there's a lot of ion generators out there that do create ozone. Look for a UL listing that shows that it's ozone free. Three, tubes or needle point bipolar ionization. With tubes, you end up having to replace them about once a year, and they're expensive. With needle point, you basically set it and forget it. Four, ion output. So depending on what size facility or how much CFM of air you've got for that ion to transfer through, there's a lot of different sizes out there. So make sure you double check what size unit you're getting and how many ions the output is. Five, cleaning. With needle point bipolar ionization, if you have an auto cleaning feature, it cleans itself every three to five days. So you don't have to go up there twice a year and clean the brushes. The brushes attract particles because they're positively or negatively charged. With auto cleaning feature, again, it's just all about reducing the service, reducing the need to have to go up there and clean them. That's the top five considerations for bipolar ionization. Learn more about bipolar ionization and UVC sterilization in HEPA and how they can work really well together at iso-air.com.